Hello, everybody, and welcome to International Podcast Day 2017. Make sure you're out there using hashtag International Podcast Day to celebrate our day, celebrating the craft that we love, and sharing the power of podcasts with the entire community. Up this session for International Podcast Day, we have two amazing content creators and two big personalities in the podcasting space. We have Daniel J. Lewis with the Audacity to Podcast and Elsie Escobar from She Podcast and the feed. First, Daniel J. Lewis, as many of us know, is a uh, host of the Audacity to Podcast and also an International Podcast Day co-founder. As an award-winning podcaster, Daniel J. Lewis gives you the guts and teaches you the tools to launch and improve your own podcast for sharing your passions and finding success. Daniel creates resources for podcasters, such as the SEO for Podcasters Training, the My Podcast Reviews Global Review Aggregator, and of course, the Podcaster Society Membership for Podcasters. As a recognized authority and influencer in the podcasting industry, Daniel speaks on podcasting and hosts his own podcast covering how-to podcast, clean comedy, and the number one unofficial podcast for ABC's hit drama, once Upon a Time, all under the umbrella of Noodle Mix Network and having received nearly 20 award nominations. Daniel and his wife Jenny live near Cincinnati with their newborn son, Noodle Baby. And also Elsie Escobar. Uh, Elsie works in the cross-section of technology, digital media, and holistic living with a heavy bias on podcast strategy and creative use of audio. As a podcaster since 2006, she was one of the first female indie podcasters using audio to teach yoga. Elsie's yoga class has now been downloaded over 4 million times. She also co-runs the largest community for women in podcasting with a corresponding podcast, of course, called She Podcast, and is currently one of the only female pundits in the podcasting space with expert insight into indie podcasters' impact, influence, and power. And they're both joining us to talk about how you can help podcasting grow. Before we get to that session, I want to thank so much the sponsors of International Podcast Day 2017. Blueberry is a full-service podcasting company, a turnkey solution that will allow a new or veteran podcaster to set up and be running within 15 minutes. They're a proud platinum sponsor of our event. Get started at Blueberry.com. Studio 21 Podcast Cafe is a full-service cafe with two working podcasting and video casting studios. The grand opening happens September 30th, while they will be broadcasting live throughout the entire day. Learn more and visit them at studio21podcast.cafe. The Messengers, a podcast documentary, is a journey through the modern world of podcasting, uncovering the magic behind why podcasters do what they do. Get your copy of The Messengers in iTunes and on Amazon by visiting themessengersdoc.com. Potable, looking for your next favorite podcast? Potable revolutionizes podcast discovery by providing podcast recommendations tailored to you. Start by going to play.potable.co. That's play.podible.co. And finally, thank you to the Audacity to Podcast, Modern Life Podcast Network, and Podbean. Well, Daniel, it is great to have you. Um, as always, International Podcast Day is, is an amazing event. It's great to have you uh, here presenting, and we're very much looking forward to your contribution this year. Thank you, Dave. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate all the work that you and Steve do into organizing International Podcast Day. I do some, and I feel overwhelmed when it comes to the day. You guys are doing a lot more, so thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll take it from here. I'm Daniel J. Lewis, host of the Audacity to Podcast, and I'm joined via telephone, yes, old style technology to talk about new media, the wonderful <laughs> Elsie Escobar, podcaster. Hello, everybody. Hey, 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 hold on. Podcaster, oh, sorry, sorry. Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame oh. podcaster, Elsie Escobar. <laughs> <laughs> I know, such a Hall of Famer that I had to, uh, you know, bring out the telephone for you so that you dealt with that. <laughs> Bandwidth isn't always our friend as podcasters, but that's okay. It doesn't stop us from sharing a message, and it shouldn't stop you from sharing a message either. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so look at podcasting, and it's unlike any other media. And I talk to new media and old media professionals about this quite often. And just today, we were having an international podcast day meetup with Cincinnati podcasters, and a public radio professional came by, and we were talking about podcasting. And it's Podcasting is so much unlike any other media. 
And that's because podcasting is from the ground up instead of from the corporate level down. You look at radio, television, books, movies, internet, popular websites, all of that is from the top down. Podcasting started from the independent content creators. And that's why I think that we're seeing slow growth and why we'll probably never see that, quote, hockey stick growth that is uh, just sudden overnight spike, although we may get a little bump here and there by major networks and such. So recognizing that it's going to be slow growth and that this is a grassroots operation and grassroots growth, the major growth we'll see in podcasting, I don't think will be from the top down. I don't think it will be the Gimlets, the Serials, the S-Towns, the New York Times and such. And although they will help in bringing more support to podcasts, I think the main way that we'll see podcasting grow is from the ground up. You and me and the other fans of podcasts, we're the ones who have the most power to bring more people to podcasts. So this session is for you as a podcaster and for you as a podcast listener. So even if you're not a podcaster, you can help podcasting grow. And we want to empower you with that. We want you to become an advocate for the community, an advocate for the podcast listeners. And this is all a big message that I know resonates with Elsie. And that's why I definitely wanted to get her on here, even if it meant having to bring her in through low <laughs> bandwidth telephone. Elsie brings great value to this conversation, so I'm glad to have you with me, Elsie. Yes, I know, and I, I absolutely agree. I agree uh, everything that you said, um, especially with the kind of like the, the the ground roots coming up. and And I think one of the things that is really interesting uh, about what you said is that even though, especially if somebody's coming from the corporate environment or maybe possibly from something that's been pre-established, such as radio, even bringing all of that large uh, entity with you when you start with podcasting, you still have to have that other sort of grassroots quality to things, right? It's like there is a, a level of sort of like thinking that they're going to be reinventing what has already been invented, sort of like sort of replicating. And that's not what's happening lately. And part of it is exactly what you said, or something that I really believe in, which is that whole idea of advocating for your work and advocating for podcasting both at the same time. And I know that you have some really great tips that you can really share with people right away that they can maybe implement from sort of like from their, uh, from the way that they do outreach, from the way that they put themselves online, from their websites and, and, and what they say in their podcasts. Yeah. The first thing I want to mention is for you, uh, if you're a podcaster, you probably listen to other podcasts, but certainly International Podcast Day is not only for the podcaster, it's for the fans of podcasts. So let's assume we're all at the fan level as well. We have podcasts we love to listen to. So my first tip is share and talk about those podcasts that you absolutely love, just like you would with movies. You know, you see a new movie and you go to your coworkers and you say, hey, did you see the latest Marvel movie or the latest Lego movie or the whatever movie? You're quoting from those movies. You're referencing them. You're telling your friends, you got to go see this. Hey, let's go see it again together. Think of that same thing with your podcast. When you go into the office and you heard a great podcast over the weekend or overnight, talk about that podcast with your coworkers. Mention it to your friends. Say, hey, you got to listen to this cool podcast. Now, the thing about podcasts, are, though, is they are much more niche than the mainline uh, in entertainment that's out there that appeals to a very broad audience. So you can't always assume that, uh, you know, if you really like an episode of the Audacity to Podcast, for example, you can't really assume that your coworker is going to care at all about it. So think about those podcasts that others might be interested in. Talk about those. If you're listening to um, the story behind podcast from Emily Prokop, a big proponent of International Podcast Day. She just did an episode actually about the history of podcasts, the story behind podcasts. And that could be something fun that you could listen to, whether it's a, a podcast like that, an entertainment-focused podcast, a documentary, a history-focused podcast. Share those. Share them online. Share them with your friends and family. Talk about them. Put them right up there with your movies, your books, 
your magazines, your articles, your TV shows that you talk about with your family and friends. Yeah. And you know, what's what's something that's been very uh, helpful for me, especially since there's been so much conversation in terms of media coverage of what's happening in our world as of late, you know, there's so much happening all over the place. And I think one of the largest complaints that I see from just most people is that there is, there's a sort of like, there's only one way to get the news, right? Or we feel like we're only getting a certain view and everything's very sort of incendiary and, oh my gosh, you headlines. And podcasts, you know, serve to sort of deepen the conversation in a lot of different issues that are, are really from the ground up, like you were talking about before. And one way that I have found to be able to sort of um, offer people that never listened to podcasts before is to offer a conversation that's happening within a podcast that is the same conversation that's happening in mainstream media but without all of the extra bonus features, which is just headlines and <laughs> trying to get your attention and link, link baiting and, you know, not really actually getting any information, but just like hearsay here and there, but to really hear people discussing. And I have found that that's been something that has really made. And when I say my community, I'm not talking about she podcasts. I'm not talking about the people from the feed. I'm not talking about probably you that are watching or listening to this, but people who are uh, that I've had relationships with for a long time online, maybe. And some of them, a lot of them are actually offline people, family members, people that I've met in my other different iterations of who I am or who I was. And so they know me as something else, not doing this podcasting thing. So me being able to bring an opportunity for them to really step into a conversation around something that will benefit them at that moment, that's also really empowering because we get an opportunity to offer another option. Um, that's something that I love whenever I see somebody complaining about the type of TV shows that are on, or they can't find anything on Netflix, or movies nowadays are just so sucky, you know, whatever. This is an opportunity to show them that there's more, that there's a little bit more to that. I like what J.D. Sutter said in the chat room. He said, I'm constantly sampling shows in all different genres and topics, so I have an idea of what's out there, so I can make good recommendations for folks that are personalized to their tastes. Excellent. Yeah, that's that's it. That is absolutely excellent. You know what? And, and JD, that's really great because most of us are so caught up with our own selves <laughs> that we don't really take the time to do that. And I feel that as podcasters, as somebody who is at the helm of speaking out in whichever way you choose to, it is, I feel, part of our responsibility to do that. It actually is part of who we are, especially when we step in into any atmosphere or any any part of, of who we are in the world as a podcast advocate to be able to talk about other podcasts above our own. So the second tip I have connecting to this is, and this might be hard, especially for us who are podcasters, and we want to talk about stuff like RSS feeds and enclosures and podcast apps and all of this. No. Uh, and this tip, I'm borrowing this from Tom Webster from Edison Research, and I invited Tom to be part of this discussion as well, and he wanted to, he just couldn't. Uh, he's doing something else right now. But what Tom said in a recent presentation is explain the content, not the technology. We can talk about, oh, what a podcast is technically, where, yes, it's uh, episodic media syndicated through an RSS feed via the enclosure tag, and it's downloadable, blah, 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 blah. That's all stuff no one really cares about. I think at some point, the technology will, like when we're talking about RSS feeds and enclosures, it will disappear. That's not to say it will cease to exist or it will be changed, but we'll no longer have to think about RSS feeds. We'll just think about I want to subscribe to that content, that show. So that's why I say, explain the content, not, oh, it's a podcast. You subscribe to it with a podcast app. And there is a place for that. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But talk instead about, here's this podcast I listen to that motivates me every Monday morning. Or here's this podcast I listen to, or here's this show I listen to 
that inspires me to, to be a better husband or to be a better wife or a better father, a better mother. Here's this podcast I listened to that helped me overcome this struggle in my life. Here's this podcast I listened to that makes me laugh louder than anything else in my life. Or here's this podcast I listened to that here's one for me for actual personal example. I absolutely hate mowing the yard. I even just recently upgraded from a gas mower to a battery powered mower and that's nicer, but I still don't like mowing the yard. So I save certain fun podcasts that I can only listen to them while I'm mowing the yard. And that makes me look forward to mowing the yard because I know that's the time I get to listen to those podcasts. So approach that with explaining the content. Say, why should people care about this show? Not the technology behind what makes that show possible. What's the content? What's the story? What's the change? What's the personal connection with that content? And why should someone listen to that? Yeah, it's um, it uh, our ability to to connect our daily life, and this is something that I teach a lot uh, with the people that I work with, is that podcasting is an embodied experience, uh, which essentially is is part of your life. And and I'm not saying that watching TV or watching movies and all that kind of stuff isn't, but there is a, an element of sitting back when you are consuming uh, some of that media, which is primarily driven by video, but something that is more of the audio component is a part of your life. And for people who, um, for people who have never really engage with podcasts, then telling them that you need to listen to the show could be construed as if in the same way that they, let's say, watch their favorite Netflix show or they watch, you know, late night TV or something like that, where it it is about them maybe sitting on the couch and watching. And so it's like, why would I want to do that when I am only listening? That seems kind of weird. And so we need to also show them or teach them that it is embodied. Like you don't have to just sit on the couch to listen to a podcast. You could do all kinds of stuff, just like what Daniel was saying. So you are an, you're embodied and that becomes a trigger so that you can then every time, you know, Daniel starts to mow the lawn and maybe he forgets to get his favorite podcast in the queue. As soon as he starts the, the lawn mower, he's going to go, Oh, and then there will be a physical cue of, of living his life. That's going to tell him I have to listen. So we need to show the people who are, we're, we're telling, how that happens. So it's definitely right in terms of that showing the content. Now, I do have to add a little bit of a caveat to uh, the sort of like what, what um, you were saying in terms of not explain the content and not the tech. But I do believe that there is one aspect, especially in social media, that we do definitely need to offer that is part of the tech, which is how to consume the actual show. Because there are a lot of different times when we know as podcasters, there is an easier way to consume the content right away within a link inside of a social media post. And so what I've started to do inside whenever I share to social media, and I know that my audience at that moment is probably not the most tech savvy type, then I will make a little bit of like little bullet points be underneath where I can say, you can listen to the show right away. If you click here, if you have an iPhone, you click here and it'll, you can play directly from the podcast app. If you have an Android phone, click here and then you can find that. Or if you can, if you want to listen straight from the website, there's a big gigantic player right at the top and you can go ahead and just press play there. And so then people have an opportunity to kind of go like, oh, there are all these different ways. Or maybe if they click through, they're able to do that as well. Um, and I know that, you know, people like my mom, she listens straight from Facebook, which is kind of shocking to me because she knows that there are podcast apps and that she knows that these things exist. But because of what I was talking to you about before, there is, she is used to habitually consuming the content, doing it in a specific way. So when she's in the kitchen, she has her iPad. She sees that we posted the latest she podcast. She plays it directly from our Facebook page. And then she continues to do her cooking. And that's what she does. That's like my so, dad. He follows the news very closely. He comes from a military background. So he's very interested in what's going on in the country and in the world. And 
Although he has an iPhone and it has that really nice news app that you can customize to see the latest news that you're interested in and such. He has the CNN app, the Fox News app, the, you know, the, all of the major network apps installed on his phone. That's where he goes. He goes into the app to check the latest news and into those separate apps. So my dad would be a potential great person to download one of those single show standalone podcast apps like Libsyn can create for you as well as some of the other companies can create those kinds of things for you. I, I'm also though being the bad son, especially bad co-founder of International <laughs> Podcast Day that I'm using my dad as a social experiment. I'm waiting to find out when he says to me, I was listening to a podcast the other day, or he uh. tells me about a podcast he discovered, because when that happens, then I will know podcasting is totally mainstream. So yeah. sorry, dad, I'm using you as an experiment. I think that I'm going to be waiting on that because, and then my next question would be, how did you listen to it? Yeah. Or how are you listening to it? Because it's interesting the way people's behavior are, is, you know, around these things. And even though, of course, we know as podcasters, there are such easy, seamless ways of consuming content. And we're so spoiled with that. We first need to meet our listeners where they are versus where we want them to be. And we invite them to other choices, but we give them the easiest choice, you know? So it's obviously on the Facebook page, like I don't, I honestly th thought nobody listened on the Facebook page. I thought that was really just it's it's there because I'm thinking like our show is like over an hour. Like I don't ever spend an hour on Facebook doing one thing or listen. You know what I mean? I don't think I've ever done that. Like I'm usually like browsing here and there and then I go away. And so to think that there are people that that's the way that they're stepping in and for us to then offer another way and say like, you can listen on Facebook or these are other ways that you can take us with you, you know, stuff like that. And it's not quite saying, hey, we're available in Pocket Cast and Beyond Pod and Overcast right. and iTunes and Apple Podcasts and Stitcher and yep. all of this stuff. <laughs> You're not overwhelming them with all of these things that are really just the exact same thing, podcast right. apps. You're giving them the absolute simplest form of how to consume the content so that you can focus on letting them get the content, not necessarily getting the technology, at least not yet. Yep. Absolutely agreed. And I, you know, it's, and I understand, like, I see a lot of people sharing, especially in social media, your latest episode. And so let's say I see something like, my latest episode is up, and you can find it on iTunes and Stitcher and Libsyn and all this stuff. And I'm always looking at that going, I don't think that that's really helpful <laughs> for whoever is listening, listening to you or watching you like put this out. Because number one, the person who's already a fan of yours is already subscribed. So they don't really need to know that it's in iTunes and Stitcher and Libsyn and all this other stuff. The person who isn't subscribed aren't gonna know what these things are. So I would pr prefer a specific link. One time you share a Stitcher link. One time you share your direct MP3 URL. One time you share it directly to your permalink. Once, you know, and so you have a different opportunity for them to understand and to be exposed to it and then go, oh, very neat. And especially now, things like Overcast and Castro, if you share links from, at least from those two that I know, I don't know about the other ones. But if you click through some of those, they actually have a really lovely page that comes up now that's on a browser page that looks like a proper website with a nice, big, gigantic player, and people can listen that way. And it just seems like that's such a much, an, a much easier uh, exposure to understanding that it's something you listen to. The next tip, and this goes back to what JD said earlier in the chat room, help people find podcasts they will like. So here, mm -hmm. I host a podcast about podcasting. Elsie hosts two podcasts about podcasting. Most likely, that person in the grocery store is not going to be interested in either of our podcasts. But we can ask them questions to find out a kind of podcast they like. Like, for example, what I like to do is uh, I ask someone, what's your favorite TV show? And then I can show them in the podcast app, look, here are a dozen 
up-to-date, active podcasts about your favorite TV show. Look, this one interviewed a few cast members of the TV show. Look, this one goes into depth. They have a three-hour-long episode about a 45-minute TV show episode. They must get really in-depth with their discussion and theories about the TV show. Talk about their hobbies or, or even consider some of those general interest podcasts, like whether it be This American Life or or a comedy podcast or something like that. And and in all cases, please do be respectful of uh, certain things like clean versus explicit or liberal versus conservative. So maybe try to stay away from some of the politically oriented shows unless you know that the person you're talking to is of a particular leaning one way or another, or you have a podcast that's good enough for all sides. And there are some podcasts out there like that. So find the podcast they'll like not necessarily your own podcast. I know we all want to get more listeners to our own podcast, but that person at the grocery store might not be interested in what you have to say. So the way that you help podcasting grow is not by growing your own audience, but by growing the audience to podcasts. Yeah, and to, you know, what's interesting to add to that as well is that one way that I have found that that is easier because a lot of us kind of lack in, in that sometimes so like we, we sort of like falter in, in our understanding of, of other podcasts or, or our knowledge of what really is out there. But, you know, one thing that I know for, you know, on Lipson, when we do um, on Fridays where we do promote the tar out of yourself Friday, even though that is obviously promote the tar out of yourself, you can't help but look at the tweets that are coming through the feed on that Friday. When you post your comment on the thread that happens on the Facebook page, even if you're just coming in and literally talking about yourself, it is really hard to avoid reading another comment. Like it's because it's so in your face. And I have been exposed to so many interesting shows just from that. Being part of the community and seeing uh, somebody really share how cool their latest episode is. And they, instead of just saying like, listen to my latest episode, they really break it down and they really share what it's about. It makes me go, Oh my gosh, I had no idea that there was a podcast about that. That's really cool. And I get to know a lot of people from that just by list by reading that. And if they consistently post week after week, I end up all of a sudden listening because I'm intrigued by the topics and I'm intrigued by, wow, I, I had no idea what that was. Same thing for She Podcast. We have a day where we do the same thing as well. And it's really about that exposure being part of, and I know that it's being part of sort of like a podcast community for podcasters, but in doing so, we get exposed to these other people. And that's where we are, we are able to then share about those because you remember that stuff you go like oh my god remember that i saw that 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 episode came up and i really really wanted to go get that and then you can really help somebody else whenever that comes up and this could actually be a really good use for i'm gonna say it new and noteworthy you could go yeah. into new and noteworthy and see what interesting podcasts are there that have just recently launched and that might equip you in a conversation to be able to tell someone, hey, you know that celebrity that you like or that's in the news, did you know they actually just started their own podcast and uh, they talk about these particular things or whatever? So again, you're connecting them with content they will like, maybe not even content you like, but it matters more that it's something they will like because especially if this podcast is their first entrance into the podcast consumption space, you want it to be something that gets them hooked. Absolutely. Oh, and you know what's another one that's really good, Daniel? It's um, it's sharing podcasts for your kids because yes. I have found that moms, especially, and this was, and, and this actually came from me, like my own, my own need. But there's a point where I was like, you know, I don't really like my girls to be involved with too many like videos and movies and things like that during the day at all. It's a very limited sort of watching time. And so, but there's times when I really need them to just not be in my face. So, but I don't want to give them a screen so that they watch it. So I thought like, oh my gosh, I, there, there came a point where I'm like, what else can I do? And I thought, oh my God, podcast. Why hadn't I thought about that? And then I started to take them out and I was really surprised by how well they took to that because it was it was just different and they were really engaged. And I thought, wow, 
I want to share that with other moms. Here's another way you can get an extra 10 minutes of your life <laughs> so that they can watch something else or listen to something else. That's also really good when, when they become the savior, the yeah. podcast a savior. And when you're talking about screen time like that, that's something I hadn't thought about. That's where uh, having either a, a smart speaker device like uh, HomePod, those are coming out soon from Apple or the Google Home or the uh, Amazon Alexa devices or something like that can make that kind of thing possible where you might be able to then play an episode through that. There's no screen whatsoever on that, yep. but you can yep. say to it, play the latest episode of whatever, April 8 or uh, Alien yeah. Adventures of Finn Caspian or The Ramen Noodle or uh, Nobody's Listening or uh, That Story Show or anything like that that you think would be appropriate and entertaining for your children. Yeah, it's so easy. And you're right. I never thought about that because that's another thing. They become obsessed with the little screen, even though they're, it's not, you know what I mean? Even though nothing's happening, it's just the thing. So I think that would be really empowering for them as well to be able to do that. So then we do come to that little technical thing of teaching people how to subscribe. And I would say, don't worry about teaching people how to subscribe to a podcast until you get them actually interested. You know, you can go to someone in the store and say, hey, do you listen to a podcast? And they say no. And you say, well, here, let me help you find a podcast. I'll teach you how to subscribe. It's just information overload. You get them hooked first. I, this sounds like I'm giving drug dealing advice, but there's there's not all that much difference between good marketing and drug dealing, unfortunately. <laughs> that's going to turn into a tweet somewhere. <laughs> yes, that's not good, Daniel. <laughs> but, if you said it, I didn't. But the big difference is what we have to offer is something valuable that positively influences your life and doesn't damage your life. So when you get someone hooked, when you found content for them, or when they come back to you, saying, oh man, I checked out that thing you told me about, that that potty, that w whatever it was, the thing. Anyway, I listened to it and oh man, that was so good. Then you can say, hey, did you know you can automatically get those episodes? You can have them downloaded directly to your phone and they'll always be available for you on your next trip, when you're driving the car, when you're flying or whatever, when you're mowing. Let me show you how you can subscribe to that thing that you absolutely loved. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, I, you know, I've never really actually done it myself as in like in real life. What I have done is helped people get off of the podcast app. <laughs> <laughs> I have done that many times actually, um, because I've been surprised by that. But, but, um, but what I have done is been able to, you know, especially with my family, been able to really help my family through this where I've been able to say like, oh, you can listen to this, or this is where you get him, or here's the name of another podcast. But I, I feel it's very important um, for there to be exposure around this as well. And to also bring, um, I guess, Matt, I don't know if it would be a really good thing, but like in terms of metaphors, especially if somebody mm -hmm. is already uh, listening to audiobooks, uh, to be able to say it's kind of like Audible, but it's not a book, <laughs> you know what I mean? So that they know that, oh, okay, because they get the concept of being able to understand that it's about downloading things and listening. Uh, and there are certain apps like that. Like I use an app called Overdrive. And in Overdrive, which is kind of set up for, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's a, a library system kind of thing, yeah. but they do have audiobooks and they have videos and they have books as well, of course, like eBooks and whatnot. And to be able, they understand the concept of being able to do that. So for us to be able to say like, it's exactly like that, but it's only for like these shows. Yeah, and you mentioned getting people off the Apple Podcasts app. And I know there can be a place for that when someone's complaining about it. What I would recommend, and this is somewhat a controversial perspective, is it may not be best for you to encourage people to use the same podcast app you do. Because you may be that podcast fan who someone in the chat room earlier said they were subscribed to, I think they said 376 podcasts. Jason oh Bryan subscribed to 96 of them, although 20 of them or more are his own podcasts. One of the other <laughs> uh, speakers here at International Podcast Day said she subscribed to 400 podcasts and listens to at least oh 70 God. episodes per week. So these are the power 
subscribers. You may be one of those power subscribers. You've tried Beyond Pod, Pocket Cast, Incast, Outcast, Upcast, Downcast, everywhere a cast cast. You've tried all of these apps and you've decided this is the absolute best podcasting or podcast consumption app for me. Well, okay, that could be true. That may not be what you would need to, to recommend to someone else. If someone has an iPhone, I think you should probably just show them the Apple Podcast app because then they don't have to install a new app. And then it might even be more memorable to them because they'll think, oh yeah, that purple icon I've seen on my phone for years now, I always wondered what that did. Well, then you can show them what it does. Or if someone's on Android, then maybe find a great free app, like whether that's uh, Podcast Addict, or some of those other good podcast apps that are free or low cost. Hey, even if you're really passionate about helping someone subscribe to a podcast, give them the four or five dollars and say, okay, buy this podcast app and here, I'm paying for it. Here's four or five dollars to cover it. So that you're helping them to subscribe to the podcast in what will be easiest for them. Not the best podcast app ever, but what's best for them. Oh, and, and I agree. And now the reason why I do this, Daniel, is because I have found that especially for searching for stuff, there are certain, certain oh, yeah. podcast apps that are easier for me to, to use. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, especially for the kids, I think that we talked about yeah. this on the feed. And even though the app itself isn't necessarily that beautiful or, or that like fixed up or anything like that but Leela kids has been really helpful for um for children's podcasts and even though at this moment and I reached out to the team and I don't know if they've updated it because I haven't um checked it out but one of the reasons I love Leela kids for for especially for sharing for moms and things like that number one it's free number two it's like broken down specifically for families so as soon as you open the app it says it's 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 broken down into the kids age three to five, five to eight, eight to 12, and then 12 plus. And then it's got these just huge icons that say like bedtime stories or stories or music and learn English and animals and ocean and curious and all that kind of stuff. So that the kids can actually, it's easy for them to see like, I want to hear an episode about an animal and then they can go there. And then all of the, uh, podcasts within there are not necessarily given to you via podcast show itself but via episode and it's broken down in that way so that they can really consume the content that they want so those that's times when I have absolutely done that uh, because I find that to be easier especially for that and then I thought my god wouldn't that be nice if we had something like as a grown-up I want to learn about tigers <laughs> I want to go in there and just press tigers <laughs> we do need that I know I would also say for you as a podcaster, you have your own podcast, you can help podcasting grow by making your own podcast as easy as visit my website and press play. There are plugins, there are very simple, free and some paid options that can help you do this. It doesn't have to be complicated. Don't load your website up with all of this stuff that buries the podcast player. Make sure it's so easy for someone to get to your podcast that they can visit your website and press play. Just today here, um, having some local Cincinnati podcasters meet up at my studio, uh, someone was talking about their concern about their search engine ranking. And their concern wasn't actually for discoverability of their podcast. Their concern was for people to be able to find their podcast by entering the name of their podcast. So I and Cliff Ravenscraft is actually in my studio right at this very minute. He's a local Cincinnati podcaster as well. And we're great friends. And uh, Cliff and I were both talking with this gentleman. And we, we both agreed that, well, first of all, make sure your domain matches your podcast name. So you don't have to tell people search for this name in a podcast app or in Google or something like that. You just say the name of your podcast and add .com to the end of it or .tv or .whatever makes sense and is affordable for you. And when people get to that website, make sure the player is so prominent, no one can miss it. They can visit your website and press play to hear at least your latest episode. Certainly helpful if your other episodes are playable from the front page, but at least have one episode playable very prominently from the front page and include the top subscription links, which I would recommend. And I've got an episode from the Audacity to Podcast talking more about one of these. I recommend have your subscribe in Apple Podcasts, 
link. Also, a subscribe on Android link powered by subscribeonandroid.com. By the way, that's created by one of our sponsors for International Podcast Day. Blueberry created that, but it's not very Blueberry branded. So you don't have to use Blueberry products to create that. You could run your Libsyn podcast feed through subscribeonandroid.com, but it makes it much easier for Android users to subscribe with a podcast app or it recommends a podcast app on Android for them to use. And then RSS. You might even consider having an email subscription option, but that's up to you if you want to set that up. I know sometimes that can be more complicated or cost a little bit extra, but your Apple podcast, what we used to call iTunes, subscribe on android.com and your RSS links. Make those very prominent so that someone can very easily visit your website and press play or visit your website and press subscribe to the platform that's most relevant to them. It's uh, and another, in, in conjunction with that, I do feel very strongly about making sure that as pretty as it looks like on a, a computer browser, for you to really understand what that looks like from the mobile uh, infrastructure, whatever, whatever it is, you know, because most people are going to be clicking through and that's the way people are consuming social media. I venture to say the majority of people are going to be exposed to a link that you share or somebody else's share, sharing within the social media environment in some way. So if you do that, make sure that you know what it looks like from the, a mobile kind of interface and what happens and how soon you can actually click through what happens when you do these things. Because a lot of the time we, we have a little bit of a disconnect because we want to make things visually appealing. But then when we never actually test the process of somebody uh, subscribing to your show via mobile on the go and how easy that is, um, I have found that there have been some uh, players that have been really skinny and the skinny players with the tiny little heads, those are the hardest ones yeah. for me to sort of like click with my thumb to be able to find them and to pause them because that you also have to remember that most people when they maybe they press play, but then they have to press stop because somebody's talking to them and they didn't know it was going to come in their ears or whatever. And I, I found myself trying to figure out how to, how to stop this now, right? And we need to make that easier as, as well. Tell me about being an advocate. Being an advocate in your local community is like my biggest thing as of right now. And I'm putting ev like this up to everybody and every single person that works with me that uh, on a one on one, I always give me one second. I'm going to see if I can one sec. Hey, May May, stop making that noise. <laughs> I know, please. She's like squeaking over there. Um, OK, so. Um, part of it is, is the library. The library system is so full of people who are essentially coming to a place to get content. That's what's already happening. The system itself is built upon education, information, the end. And so the librarians themselves are always looking for ways to enhance um, knowledge and be able to give information to those that are attending their, you know, the library. They're constantly looking for uh, content. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have your podcast there, but that could be you stepping up and saying, I would like to run a workshop, a free workshop on podcasting. And I'm not talking you are going to teach people for podcasts, but essentially have a workshop about podcasts for families and kids as another opportunity to um, enhance their family life, to be able to offer um, a, a podcasting workshop and really focus in on business podcasts or podcasts that are really empowering for another type of um, uh, demographic, sort of like people who are immigrants, because there's a lot of uh, podcasts out there who are teaching immigration practices and how to do your citizenship test and all that kind of stuff, or how to learn English, to be able to do something like that, where you come in and you essentially just say, these are other options. You're teaching people how to consume them, but you're talking exactly what you're saying, uh, Daniel, you're talking to what they are looking for, what information they are craving. And again, as, since they're going into the library to, to read books, audio, like patio books, if you will, all of those books with all the extra things that come with them, that would be a wonderful thing to do. Just making friends with the, pot, with the librarians. Same thing is happening with like the Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce in your, in your area is by far wanting to inform people about the area 
as well as generally speaking, businesses and things that have to do with the type of businesses that they have. And they, they try to really offer tools. This is when you can come in as well and say, maybe your podcast is one of them. Or maybe you just want to go out there and advocate for some of your uh, favorite podcasters who are reaching these people. I have one of my clients who has Small Biz 101 podcast, and she actually doesn't do much teaching about online sort of practices and online marketing, but she really zeroes in on, it's sort of like um, a, sort of like a real basic class on what it means to have a business, like an, a, just a business. And I feel this is such a wonderful podcast to have had available at Chamber of Commerce's university systems and things like that. They're also looking for, especially clubs, and um, as, as, as those ones that are serving people who are of a specific niche within a university, what a wonderful way to be able to go in there and say, hey, you guys that are doing your, um, you know, movie, like your movie club, or they're part of the media, uh, you know, they're getting their, their BFA or something like that, to be able to offer some really wonderful fine art shows that are out there and say like, wow, check this out. This is another way to do it. So. I'm a real big advocate when it comes to that so that you can step out and you can teach people about how to listen to podcasts. And there could be a model for how to do this. And, and not only in these smaller, very local groups, but even at larger, more corporate, even broadcast levels. Uh, I, I can't give details, but I would say keep an eye on Cincinnati. There's a tease for you. <laughs> Something could Thanks, be coming Daniel. out of Cincinnati that uh, might be inspirational to some other cities for some some opportunities for you to be an advocate in your local community. So good. So good. Elsie, what else really stands out to you for a way that we, whether we're podcasters or podcast fans, can help podcasting grow? I think one of the key uh, teachings that has really been an impact for me is that you really need to... and. Uh, teach your audience language that they can repeat. This is something that I, that I often say to my, to my, the, you know, to my ladies from the E-League specifically. And when I say language that I can that you can repeat, I'm not talking about word for word. I'm talking about how powerful your mission and your impact statement is and how that is embodied by the way that you speak behind the mic every single time you go out there. Because there's obviously things that we all believe in and the reason that we're behind the mic. And the clearer we are about why we are podcasting or our message, their larger sort of vision of our work, the easier it is for that person to be hearing it to then share that with another person. Because I feel, yeah, it's great for us to talk about it, to talk about our shows, but the true growth actually happens when the next person can share you. And I love it when people get on and on and social media and they share something that I've said that has said like, or, or they, or they kind of, kind of move to the place where like, and I have held Elsie in my head talking to me about downloads really don't matter because of X, Y, and Z. Right. And I know that that's something I bring up a lot in terms of just having another way to measure success versus downloads. That's something that I say often a lot in every, almost every single interview that I go on. And so I am glad that people are repeating that language because it's in that repetition that it's actually going to have legs that's when it starts to grow. But it only comes from a sense of clarity for you as a podcaster to know why you're behind the mic. Because if you're wishy-washy and you don't really know what your show is about and it's just all about all of this stuff and it's really fun and exciting, if you can't really zero in on the why, nobody else is going to be able to share it. They're going to go, oh, Daniel's show is really nice. He talks about all kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, you know, and that so it, it won't be as a one pointed thing. And if you, if they can keep, if your listeners really love you, they'll hear the same themes and they'll be able to then share them. And then that's when it's like, I've got it. When you start to, she, to hear your language shared by somebody else, that's when you've got them. That's when the true growth starts to happen. 
Elsie, thank you very much. You've shared amazing content. We could go on for another hour, I'm sure, talking about this. Oh, but sure. <laughs> this is your opportunity. You watching or listening to this right now. Now you carry on the conversation. Continue celebrating. Hey, guess what? International Podcast Day. This is a great excuse for you to start that conversation. All of this stuff that we've been talking about, this is your chance. This is your excuse to do that. Other companies, yesterday was a National Coffee Day, and I got a free cappuccino at a local United Dairy farmers and and in june is national donut day is a donut or a coffee really going to change your life in the long term that is i know in the short term it makes your life better but in the long term no but podcasts do share that life-changing power with others and take these tips that elsie and i have shared with you so that you can help the podcast industry grow help podcasting grow even if you're not a podcaster you have the most powerful influence among your friends and family to expose them to this amazing content, this life-changing content, this high-value niche content so that you can help them make their lives better too. By the messages that they consume, the podcasts that they find, you can be that agent of change, that advocate in your community, in your relationships. So Elsie is the co-host of she podcasts a fantastic and very entertaining podcast that is, although <laughs> it's targeted for women podcasters, guys, we can learn a lot from this. And it's extremely entertaining to, to listen to. And that's, I think, maybe one of the biggest reasons I enjoy She Podcasts is because it's entertaining, not because it's educational. I just enjoy the perspective <laughs> and enjoy laughing and enjoy that you guys don't take yourself so seriously and that you have, you know, the seven tips for this, like I do, obnoxiously <laughs> with my show. Elsie is also the co-host of The Feed, the official Lipson podcast. And there will be links for those shows, I'm sure, on the website at internationalpodcastday.com, where you can search for them in your favorite podcast app. And I host The Audacity to Podcast, the at least one-time award-winning podcast about podcasting. Maybe it will be the two-time. We'll find out later tonight at the uh, People's Choice Podcast Awards. Connect with Elsie on Twitter at YoGeek, and I'm on Twitter at the Daniel J. Lewis. Thank you very much for joining us for this, for hanging out with us for International Podcast Day. So now I, I know that while you're here watching the live stream, maybe you don't want to break yourself away from this and tell people about your favorite podcast. So maybe tomorrow you can tell people, hey, did you know yesterday was International Podcast Day? And then implement all of these tips and tools that we gave you. Thank you very much for joining us, Elsie. Thank you for joining me and sharing this presentation with me. Thank you very much, Daniel. I really appreciate it. Well, Daniel, Elsie, we can't thank you enough for your uh, continual support of International Podcast Day. You both do so much within the podcasting space, helping podcasters and also those podcast listeners and growing that, uh, that effort and great, amazing tips that you've shared. We can't thank you guys enough. On behalf of International Podcast Day, our entire team, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, everybody, International Podcast Day, we still have several hours ahead of us. Make sure you're using internet, hashtag International Podcast Day. Thank you to our sponsors, Blueberry, Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, The Messengers of Podcast Documentary, and Potable. With that, thank you so much, and we will see you soon.